Welcome back to Sustainable Energy. Today we meet rural communities making a living with small-scale projects that are good for the environment. And they use nature-based solutions too, our theme this year. In Mars Viwa, in the center of Zimbabwe, people rely on solar energy to grow their crops. Let's take a look. Handsome Fondu knows how precious water is. He admits it. He wouldn't be much without it. Come and see. My water collection set up begins here, by the gate. When it rains enough, it goes through the pen. And when it's filled up, it goes here. Here are the corridors I made for the water, so it can be controlled. Digging the contours is a way to preserve water so that it doesn't get wasted. Handsome successes with his crops can seem surprising. In 2019, Zimbabwe faced one of the worst droughts of its history. I look at water as if it's my god, because all my life is centered around it. I mainly focus on growing tomatoes to sell at the market. I grow other crops like butternut for the family to eat. Last year, the World Food Programme estimated nearly 8 million people suffered from hunger, 6 million of them in rural areas. For Handsome, his wife and their seven children, salvation lay in harvested rainwater. And a new water management technique called a dead level contour that uses channels to store harvested water. But it requires a flat field to stop water from running. I started digging the contours in 2000, but I didn't know about the dead level contours. I just dug to get water. I learnt new water harvesting methods when I started working with the Monde Trust. The Monde Trust is a local organisation formed in the 1980s when a group of local researchers and farmers joined hands to save local crops, but they needed to solve the water problem. Daniel Landovu's father was one of the co-founders. In this vegetable patch, Daniel uses the simple homemade tool called the A-frame. It helps identify points at the same level in the ground to optimise the water flow. Because when water is travelling in a straight line, it will move at a faster rate, but with the dead level contour. That very water is also used to irrigate the crops through gravity. That's the idea. Daniel says it's hard to keep farmers interested in agriculture because of the lack of water. But many are looking for more drought-resistant crops, like millet. The Munde Trust is making sure they don't give up farming altogether by developing innovations in agriculture, local construction and educational programs. Our work is to, Our work is to go around communities preaching the word of harvesting water. Harvesting water. Like in other remote parts of southern Africa, solar power seems to be the only option for the population. Cheneso and Lovu invested in panels in 2019. We do gardening using a solar-powered borehole for watering. This tank stores rainwater. It's connected to a solar-powered pump that will capture the water and distribute it for various tasks in the household. We planted tomatoes on a small patch we were watering and we realized it was thriving. So we decided to grow other vegetables. We use the water for other domestic needs like washing. I also let some elderly people take some water from here because it was getting too crowded at the communal borehole and I feel pity for them. Just like water, solar panels are sought after in Zimbabwe. Most of them are brought in from South Africa and sold on the informal market. And although the Monday Trust knows how to make the most of them, for now Daniel and his team must make do with small-scale initiatives, like the solar irrigation project. Two months ago, we were selling butternuts to the community. This place is one hectare. If we can grow tomatoes for a specific period and we happen to maintain it seriously, I hope we can excel. The Monde Trust has helped local farmers reach food security through researching and implementing a range of simple but efficient solutions. However, lack of public funding are making it hard for the population to develop these techniques on a larger scale and provide energy access to all.
We are back with Yann Laurence, a biodiversity expert. We've just seen a community in Zimbabwe address environmental issues that many populations face in Eastern Africa. Uh, what are the benefits of keeping our countryside, making them more sustainable? Of course, there are the benefits of, let's say, a healthy, pleasant quality of life mm -hmm. in general. But also uh, the fact that um, keeping the countryside alive with renewed farming system um, means that we are going to reuse uh, resources that were forgotten in the past. For example, look at this little pond here. Uh, it's a small wetland. By renewing this agricultural system, we are now reinventing uh, a way of using a natural environment such as this one. Uh, and this water will provide, of course, water. Uh, but also, it is going to host a lot of insects, frogs, and all these elements will participate to a more productive farming system without any need of uh, pesticides and uh, synthetic fertilizers. Yeah, and we're far from Zimbabwe here in Brittany. Uh, are France and the European Union doing enough to protect their ecosystems? Well, on the one way, we have a system of protected areas, which are uh, important, but still the protection is not enough. Only 1% of the surface of land is actually uh, really strictly protected. We need more. We need, for example, to go from this 1% to 10%. That's what, uh, by the way, uh, the European Union uh, is proposing and is discussed globally. Energy is a big subject. How can we measure its impact? Well, of course, everyone is aware that energy has had a tremendous impact on the, on the countryside. Uh, think of hydropower, huge dams. Think of the coal systems in all the world. Now we are thinking of using the countryside and its resources to have a more sustainable and decentralized energy system. That is, for example, in here, you have solar energy, you have wind energy. They are using biomass, they are using wood, they are using the crops uh, to, to produce some part of their energy. So countryside was the victim, let's say, mm -hmm. of our energy system and could be tomorrow the provider of uh, more sustainable and decentralized energy. Thank you, Yann Laurence. Stay with us. Up next, we go to Colombia, where an expert on climate change shows us the benefits of good water management. With this project, we are co-generating evidence with farmers on which are the practices, the technologies that can help us to increase productivity and food security 